Welcome back. Okay, the province has decided not to extend the winter school break to curb the spread of COVID, even with accelerating daily case counts. Have a listen to this. Mr. Speaker, according to the Chief Medical Officer of Health and leading medical experts across this country, schools in this province are safe. That, of course, is Education Minister Stephen Lecce. He says Ontario's safe school plan has worked and that they are committed to keeping kids learning. But do community members share the same sentiments? It's a big announcement that was yesterday, and we're expecting some more announcements coming tomorrow with a possible lockdown. What could that look like? So let's talk about education. I'm joined right now by Seth Bernstein, a parent and Toronto Public High School teacher. Seth, good morning. Good morning, Melanie. Thanks so, for having me. Thank you for joining us yet again. I, I first want to see how you're doing because you are a teacher in school, in class learning. How is that going for you right now? Uh, it's felt really good. So when I was on in mid-September, just before the school year started, I expressed how excited I was to see students and how much uh, we were all missing that sense of community. Uh, and and really hopeful that we could have a full school year together uh, in, in person. And so I've been able to do that for this first two months, this quadmester, and it's felt really nice to, to have the students there and, and, you know, to see them connect with each other and with the school community. Uh, it just, it reminds us all of the importance of, of school and being together in that space. So, Seth, your reaction then to uh, hearing education ministers saying, uh, yes, we will not extend the winter break. At least that's mm -hmm. the decision for now. So you're, you're happy with that? So, um, you know, I, I, I was a little confused. So two days ago, um, the minister had floated the idea of extending the, the break or, you know, we weren't sure what that would look like if he meant remote learning for that, for that extra time. Uh, and then the next day sort of backed off it, walked it back and, and said, we're not going to do it. So I, I, something had clearly unnerved him um, with, with the numbers that he would consider uh, an extended break. Um, so I'm not sure what changed in that day. So I have some concerns there, but of course, I'm really excited to be able to stay in school and I want to stay in school as long as it's considered safe by Public Health Ontario. And I feel the same way about uh, the school reality for my kid and her peers. And she is in grade six? Grade six, yeah. Okay. So, so we've had her in class and that's been going really well. Um, but, you know, like many parents, uh, we're on a, a little bit of pins and needles uh, as we look at the community case counts going higher um, and, and some lack of clarity around what's actually going on in schools mm -hmm. in terms of case counts. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we want it to continue. We see how important it is. We see how much of a difference it's made in all of those kids' lives to be back together. Um, but we, we, we want them to be safe and we hope it, it, it can stay that way. Yeah, and we are hearing through sources that if there is a lockdown or, or a, some sort of modified version of a lockdown tomorrow, that schools are really the last resort. They really do want to keep them open. At least that's what we're hearing um, from government sources. Um, do you think that there's mm -hmm. anything else additional that can be done for students, for educators that hasn't been done just yet? Well, I mean, when we look at assessing the government's plan, we have to recognize that 25% and, and higher now, so we're seeing flow to virtual learning, 25% of families didn't go in school, didn't choose in school. So there's a huge swath of the student population that's not in class. So, uh, you know, trying to increase confidence to get students back into the school communities would be a big piece. I also think we're dealing with um, a lack of understanding around, a lack of clarity around numbers. So um, it feels like the numbers are good in schools in terms of COVID and, and school level spread, but we don't actually really know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we stopped testing and the screening levels were eased up um, and and so we're not sure what's actually going on at the school level and I have concerns as we approach winter um, and windows have to close and case counts keep going up that that we might see more evidence of spread and one last thing just just uh, I, my sense is that there's a growing uh, level of stigma being associated with with COVID cases and and that's leading families and students to to make choices um, you know that that um, protect privacy we need to have mechanisms in place 
to ensure that that schools know what's going on in terms of their students and, and testing uh, and tracing, um, and that that we have an awareness campaign that destigmatizes uh, uh, COVID cases and, and isolation. That's a really good point, and I'm glad that you brought that up, Seth. And, and I'd love to bring you back on the show and, and do another check-in in, say, a month or so and see where things stand. But, yeah, that's really important to talk about destigmatizing all of this. Uh, Seth, he's a parent, he's a teacher, he's an all-around good guy. So thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me again, thank Melanie. You. Thanks. Okay, um, take care. Natasha, that's a really good, you know, conversation. You're talking about the stigmatiza stigmatization, if I can say that right, of, of, of contracting COVID-19 yeah. and all of that, especially with young children, right? And, and they're whispering in the playgrounds and talking all about that. That's a really important, important piece here. Yeah. Very good. That was a really good conversation. I'm so glad that you had him on as a guest because I didn't even think about that. My kids are doing virtual school, so they're kind of removed from that. But I can only imagine, um, you know, when one child you hear about, oh, hey, did you hear about so and so? And then they come back to school and then they're treated differently. Right. So that's a yeah. huge, huge piece. The other piece that stood out to me there was how he was saying that we really don't know about the numbers and how things have kind of eased up. So there could be a whole lot of asymptomatic people going to school right now and then going home for Christmas break, right? So yeah. uh, very, very interesting conversation and, and good conversation pieces to Absolutely. be had. So. Absolutely. All right.